What's up guys, my name is Mike. Welcome to part two of my video tutorial series for ZBrush. Today we're gonna talk about a very useful function called DynaMesh. A couple of the things we have to talk about are the topology of your object and the number of active points that you have when working with an object. The topology of your object is important because if you see here, you have triangles and squares, which are the two main shapes of your faces that you use in 3D when you're working on a mesh. If you're using a brush, like the move brush, and you pull all of these polygons away from each other, they get all stretched out. The reason that this is important is because if you have a stretched out space like this and all these polygons are way, way too big, and you go down here to your, say, the clay build-up brush, and you try to draw on this, nothing happens. You can't do anything, your mesh is stretched out, and you need more faces inside of here to be able to get any kind of additional topology if you want to continue sculpting. So if you're watching this tutorial, you probably don't have an object in your scene yet. So what you've got to do is go over to the right, click on the simple brush, select the sphere, click and drag it out, go up here to the left, hit edit mode, go over to the right, hit make poly mesh 3D, and now you are ready to follow along with me. So if you go down here to the bottom right and you hit the draw poly frame button, all of a sudden you can actually see the topology of your mesh. You can see the number of faces, and I mean, obviously you're not gonna count all of those, but you can see the topology of it. You can see how it's all nice and evenly spaced. By the way, if you just wanna frame up your object without having to zoom in and zoom out a bunch of times, hit F, and it brings your object right to the center of the screen. So on the bottom here, with polyframe turned on, if you go down below subtool, you can just minimize the subtool menu here, right below subtool is geometry. So if you click on that, you have all these options here, and you're gonna see the tab here for DynaMesh. So go ahead and click DynaMesh, turn that on, and you'll see that the way DynaMesh works is if you hold control and you click and drag outside of your object in this empty space out here, that activates DynaMesh. So what does DynaMesh do? DynaMesh, if you see here, if I zoom way into my object and I take my brush and I stretch all these polygons out and I create this geometry and it's all lopsided, well, if I go over here and I click and drag outside of my object and activate DynaMesh, suddenly the topology is nice and even and it redistributes all the faces across the surface of my object. This is extremely useful if you're starting out and you're taking an object and you want to stretch it out all over the place and you're trying to draft up a character really quickly or if you want to take two objects and you want to combine them together, DynaMesh does that too. Say for some reason I just want these two parts that are sticking out from the face to be connected. I can take DynaMesh and I can stretch them out all the way as much as I want and as long as the two parts are touching each other and overlapping, if I hold control and I click and drag outside of my object, DynaMesh combines the two pieces together and redistributes the topology as evenly as it can. The most important feature of DynaMesh that I have to tell you about is, if we go over here and close Subtool, go into Geometry, I have DynaMesh turned on, and you can see underneath DynaMesh there's this resolution slider. So I had mine set to about 400 for this while I was working. That's pretty high. It goes all the way up to like 1,000, 2,000, 3, that's way too much. Even at 400, you can see up in the corner, my active number of points is about 4 million polygons. Just on this part of the head, that's like way, way high. That's like insanely high. And I only did that because I'm just messing around. This is a tutorial and I'm showing you what to do. So if you go under to this little slider and you know, you turn it all the way down to eight, turn it all the way down. As soon as you make a change to your mesh, like you pull something or draw on it, click and drag outside of it, activate DynaMesh, you can see that it significantly reduced the number of polygons on my object and all the detail that I put time and energy into is totally lost. But fortunately, if you do this on accident, <clears throat> all you have to do is hit Control Z, it goes right back to where it was. So, so this is extremely useful for when you're early on in the sculpting process because you can change your resolution to the level that you need and morph and shape your object to the basic shape that you want it to be but it's very dangerous if you're working later in the sculpting process because it's gonna take your entire object and it's just gonna destroy all of the detail and all the hard work and time and energy that you put into it. But the main point of this video is to show you that DynaMesh can create really complex shapes really, really quickly, and all you have to do is set your resolution and click and drag, and it will combine 
any active parts that are touching and even out the topology of your object. Now the last thing that we have to talk about when it comes to Dynamesh is subdivisions. So what is subdivision? When you subdivide your object, you hit Control D, and you see in the top right corner, your active points is quadrupled. So that takes the number of faces on your object and it quadruples it all the way across your object. So if you hit Control D again, you see active points climbed up to 230,000. Hit Control D a couple more times and you've quickly gone up to 14 million polygons on your object. So that's like having subdivisions within subdivisions. Like there's, there's way too many. It's so dense that even if you take a brush and you try to move it, you're barely gonna be able to do anything to it because there's so many polygons all over the surface of your object. So when you're activating Dynamesh, you have to be on the lowest subdivision level, meaning you cannot be on the level where you have hit Control D any number of times. So in order to go back down to your lowest subdivision level, say you've already hit Control D like five times and you have like five million points, hold Shift and press D and it will walk down one subdivision level. And if you hit Shift D again, it'll walk down another and another and another until you're back down to your lowest subdivision level. So that's pretty much everything when it comes to using Dynamesh. So you have your subdivision levels, you have to watch out for your resolution slider and set that at an appropriate level, usually around 200 is fine for most what you're working on. Beyond that, it's basically just playing with all these features combined and finding the appropriate level, you know, starting out small and building and building and sculpting takes a long time. You just kind of have to play with all the tools until you're comfortable with what works best for you because every situation is different depending on what object you're working on or what you're doing. So that sums up everything you need to know about Dynamesh in ZBrush. If you guys liked this video, if you found it helpful, leave me a like. If I forgot anything or if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Next week, we're gonna talk about Z-spheres, which are extremely useful if you are drafting up a character really quickly or you have to make a base mesh for your model. But that's all we have time for today. So again, thank you and I will see you guys next time.